Compared to last year, our team is, I think, more coordinated, or more synced, and I think everyone has a better understanding of their role with the team and how we kind of all fit together and how we all, I guess, come together to have our style. Well, welcome back to round two of NC State versus Marysville here in the College Championship. Boy, oh boy, Crumbs, was that a game one? It absolutely was. We just saw an Aatrox just demolish an entire game and a Baron power play that might have broken some records because actually the team that got Baron lost when they had it. Which so. does not happen very Weird. often, as he pointed <laughs> yeah. out. Again, I think for NC State, had you know things in the right places, bottom lane, Conversely, was going exceptionally well for them. The map was really polarized, which can be difficult to play if you're not used to such extreme positions in league. But I think they navigated that well. They delayed the game nicely. It just felt like they couldn't figure out a way, even after they got Baron, to be like, okay, how do we attack this Aatrox that isn't leaving our side lane? And then when everyone came to Niles, the game pretty much ended on the spot. So we'll see what adjustments the teams do make here in draft. We have swapped sides to NC State. We'll draft on blue for this go around, and Jace is getting out of there. Don't want to play against that one, and I guess Nunu's staying the same there. Yeah, I mean, I tell you, I played a lot against Nunu. You don't want to play against that champion. It's just way too annoying, and so is Urgut. So back-to-back -back bans from Maryville, making sure they target what NC State is good at. And I'm expecting an Ari ban as well. Uh, no, look at that. They ban Aatrox themselves. What kind of next-level move is that? Maybe again, just feeling like it's a powerful champion. Don't want to give it away here on red. Akali band away once again, and this time Hani will get the Clyde. Wow, I don't get that reference. Oh, we'll get the Pike is what I meant. <laughs> Whoa, you got it. Thanks for the coverage there, Crumbs. It's all right. Clyde's, That's pike, all right. Clyde's Pike, as you mentioned in the last game, extremely accurate, but Hani loves to play the aggressive ah, supports as well. There it is. Got exactly what you mean. But that's Honey also a Clyde, by the way. Spike. Yeah. Right, the the, uh, the you, notorious killers. Yep, yeah. playing against each other. That's what happens at the end, I guess. It's but, a tragedy. All right, Silas dropped it. Let's get back on track. Ike is a flex pick, all right? We got to get That's to true. that. We got to get that hammered into our heads now. Because of what G2's done, Pike can be flexed into the top lane. We know it works as support, but it can also work in mid lane. And we've seen it quite a bit in solo queue, but Maryville is going to take away the Silas from NC State that we saw in game one. So a lot of trading back and forth. Looks like both these teams prioritizing a lot of the same picks. Also with Thresh here, so Clyde saying, you know what? I like Hook Champions. He took the one I played last game. Give me the other one there in Thresh. Also the Ari that we did see banned. We'll get picked very early here. Yeah, the early Ari pick, that's just something you never see. Blind Ari out of all things, because you know Silas can easily be flexed into the top lane or mid as well. So this is Shadow Vision just saying, bring it. Whatever you have against Ari, I can beat, which I've never seen an Ari player ever say that and actually succeed. <laughs> so kudos to him. I mean, this is, you know, quite common at the collegiate level. Uh, lots of signature champions we see uh, already on the Maryville side draft wise so many target bands kind of given over so again players do have their signature champions we saw from Captain Trims in the last series with his Zed to Ari I think fulfilling a similar niche here for Shadow Vision and they didn't want to lose it in phase two and maybe try and navigate a better matchup so they'll take it blind and kind of see what happens is Sejuani going to be the jungler locked in now for CKG. Now Sejuani is good into Ari because you can basically get her to use your ultimate at command. You can chuck your ult and she has to get out. You can just jump on her and she has to get out. But you are really fat, so you get hit by charm a lot. And that will get you killed. So you have to be super careful. CKG has to be super mindful that Ari into the later stages of the game becomes very powerful for a pick champion. That charm lasts two seconds. If you don't have Merc Treads, you're going to be CC'd, and it doesn't matter your itemization, you're going to be taken out. And a very different style of jungler as well. It was Nocturne last game, of course, for CKG. So we'll see what happens here on the set. Juani, Nico, and Kennen, though, going to get banned away. So Maryville picking mostly on top lane, honestly. We've seen those picks go there a lot. And Aurelia, again, keeping the the strong, stylish champions out of the hands of the Maryville solo laners. Let's see what their last ban is here. So those are mostly the solo laners that you can blind. You can blind your Nico, you can blind your Kennen. So I think they're just trying to make sure that Niles gets the best matchup he can get by keeping the Silas flex until the very end and by giving him or Wolfie the counter pick. So I think Maryville has a really 
solid plan so far. And I'm also curious to see what NC State is going to do, because obviously Maryville is just going to take their AD carry here, and nothing else would make sense. Here's Tristana, which is uh, we don't see too often, but see from time to time. Early Lucian there for Rift Dog will, of course, be the matchup versus probably the Pike. So I'll say this much. When I play Phil and I get an AD carry, I usually go to Tristana because of her ability to escape and also thwart your enemy's plans. An Ari that gets hit by a buster shot is really not very effective. She has to use another charge to get back in. She's not going to get in position to hit her spells again. And so it's a solid pick. You can disengage from a lot of things, but especially against the Kindred, it's going to matter a lot. You can buster shot somebody out of that Lamb's Respite, making them uh, you know, they can die now, and that's a huge deal, but it also mean you can chuck somebody into it. There's so many possibilities. All right, well, last pick, Hecarim, and I think that's going straight to the top, Crumbs. Yeah, Hecarim top into Poppy. You've got Conqueror and Ignite. That's pretty much it, right? True damage into a tank. I think if there was a way to describe Naus as a player, that's a pretty good summary. He's, he loves Conqueror and Ignite. I mean, the way he played from level one, we heard it from the analyst desk, like, unrelenting pressure. And perhaps, you know, that kind of thing, can get you killed if you are too hasty and are too far forward. But we'll see what happens because he felt so unpunished in the last game here. I imagine Penguin will change roots up quite a lot. Yeah, Poppy and Kindred can do a lot to punish a champion like Hecarim. Not Especially only locking no him down with no flash and against a Sejuani as well. Kindred is very good at hopping around, dodging some of Sejuani's skill shots, not getting CC'd. So I really want to see Penguin take over this game. Wasn't a fan of the Gragas jungle, not his own fault. He played Gragas, just not the greatest champion right now. With Kindred, I think he has the right matchups and tool to do way more. Well, we'll see how the game shakes out because it was a very fast first 10 to 15 minutes of game number one. Remember, it's only best of three here in the quarterfinal rounds as well. So it'll be best of fives after this, but it is tough to play elimination games after you lose the first one. But that's the situation right here for NC State. It's the same every time. Forget that you're about to lose. Just think about it. You're starting a brand new set and you're trying to kick some ass. You got to win two in a row. And that's a mindset that will take you to the next level of the tournament. And I hope to see North Carolina State embody that. Well, we'll see what happens here at level one as the teams will move out onto Summoner's Rift for the second time in their series. Our fifth time today. Will we get another three game series crumbs? Or with, with these to picks, sweep it I'll home. take as many games as possible, man. I'm, I usually love playing solo queue, but just watching these picks and these kinds of interactions, I, I'm getting my fill. Well, again, Shadow Vision's certainly a signature pick here for him on the Ari. So curious to see how that one shakes out versus the Silas. Wolfie did end up with that champion as the draft ended out. But before we go any further, we're going to throw it down to Ovalu, who has a sideline report with Walrus. Thanks, guys. I am here with Walrus, 2017 MVP for MU. Game one went your way. What's going to happen in game two? You know, we definitely were a little sloppy earlier, and so I definitely think we're going to come out on all guns running, and I think we're going to come out and smash these guys. Wonderful. Thank you so much, and Thank best you. of luck to you. Woo! <laughs> Back to you guys. Uh, gotta love the enthusiasm. Unfortunately, train has slowed down just a moment. There is a pause here. We'll smash that pause button. I mean, they said it, you know, it, he said we played a little sloppy in the early game, gonna come out even faster than they did before, and uh, someone's like, you know what, let's take a break. I need a, I need a timeout. <laughs> Slow it down. They're not capable of talking just yet. You know, talking strat, they gotta stay. Stay put, there's not a lot of strat you can even talk, right? The game hasn't even started. All you can really do is go through things like, okay, where do I want to gank? What are the spikes that I'm looking at? What are the best routes? Can we contest Scuttle Crab? Who has priority in lanes and at what levels? Those are really the only things you can discuss right now before you get to the lane, and the conversation will last two minutes. So the guys just have to sit there, calm their nerves, make sure that they're really focused and not thinking about anything else. I think uh, the mental aspect is good to point out here, though, because, again, you know, collegiate-level players get very little experience on stages like this. As we are going to move ourselves back into the game. Seems like everything has been restored. And the NC State chance still going strong here. I'm a fan. Got to support the team, right? Got to make sure that they can hear. They can feel that energy. You have white noise pumped into your headset, by the way. If you don't know, when you play on professional games, you've got white noise that's supposed to make sure that you nothing else gets into your head besides the game sounds, but you can still hear thundering noises from the speakers and you can hear chants 
And that's really cool. Like that, that actually makes a difference. I love that part of playing, and I think most professional players do as well. And on the other side from Maryville, I believe Niles' mother is actually in the audience cheering the top laner on. So, you know, there's some some phantom on both sides here, and we'll see how this matchup plays out this time around. Going much better already. <laughs> Look <laughs> at one. Kindred. Oh man, that sucks. He was trying to go for the invade onto the Sejuani. Yes, you make it a little bit late, but he missed the hop over the wall and also used mana for his W. So, waste a little bit of his spells. And even though Poppy in the top side is being really aggressive against Hecarim and does have a, kind of an HP advantage, she doesn't have Conqueror to heal back, nor does she have Ignite. So, she just has no control over this lane. Yeah, and now at level 2 here for Hecarim, he's going to pop the W, get even more health back. Good charm there in mid lane onto Wolfie. Doesn't quite nail the next chain either, so Shadow Vision gets a great trade there. I want to see Kindred not be deterred by the mistake that she just made. She has to continue to be aggressive against Sejuani. It's going to make every single laner's life so much easier. So after this blue buff, let's get some invades, because look at that. That's what Sejuani jungle looks like. She's always super low, especially on the first clear. And if she's not able to take advantage of her early on, Sejuani's just going to be able to hit that level six spike and start affecting lanes way more than she can. We've also had both junglers actually pop top side this time. Last game, they actually started on opposite sides. So Niles, knowing this, going to dip down and try and get a ward in. Make sure he doesn't get ganked. Because if there's one thing that will stop this high pressure style, it is dying early. <laughs> So now Scuttlers have spawned 315, and it turns out that the mark is into the bottom side. So Kindred is going to be path in bottom, and since Sedge is basing, I think she gets her first stack for free. Pretty big deal. Yeah, Penguin just going to go straight there to the mark. Wolf says, you know what? Not doing too badly. CS is even. Happy to farm under the turret for now. No need to press the panic button. So Penguin going to start off this Scuttle, and nothing here to really get contested. In fact, both bottom lane and mid lane even pushing, although Rift Dog. Starting to fight here, Clyde did hit a nice play. Is it safe to say that because Scuttler now spawns at 315, it's an objective nerf to Kindred when the first mark is yeah, one definitely. minute later? And now Niles getting pushed around by Wolf, doing a really nice job, gets the wall slam and trades very effectively. Niles still waiting for this wave, but already things looking a lot different here in the top lane 1v1. With CKG up here, gonna have to mean Poppy will be careful, now spotted on the ward. Wolf does have the step fast presence up, I believe. Gonna get the stun, really smart play. Although he still gets knocked up by the Arctic Assault. They're gonna dive in, that will force the flash. Pretty bold, pretty bold by her, thinking that Hecarim is not gonna be able to follow up on that. And because you have Pike and Lucian to the bottom lane against such a safe lane of Trist and Thresh, Kindred is just not capable of ganking or diving that right now. So she just has to counter jungle and Sejuani gets the same thing. So that's just a better trade for Maryville University than North Carolina. Nice. Electrocute Procto again. Shadow Vision playing well in the lane. We'll feel a little low on mana. Might look for a recall here, but is on top of a ward. So have to pull off. This is such a different game from what we had at yeah, they're like About four kills already ago. in the last game. I mean, game. the other one, we were flashing out before three minutes, looking for all sorts of aggressive plays. This time around is much more tempered. And uh, certainly a lot more even as far as the farm goes. Askew, I think, finally getting a little bit more here in the lane, able to not get pushed in as hard. Will pop the presence up. Niles trying to bait that out. Going to look to go back in, perhaps. No, does not look for the auto. Big wave building here for Poppy. We're going to try and collect as much of that before it hits the turret. So I really want to see what happens between Kindred and Sejuani here. Kindred needs to be playing very aggressive into Sejuani whenever she can. Slam battle. Ooh. No one had it. Oh, actually, CKG did. Does not pull the trigger on wanting to take that away. And look at that. She now has a level advantage over Sejuani. Let's see that pressure be exerted. And again, with the game being you know, a lot more even, I think it is time for Penguin to Use the pushing lanes. We've seen Ari do that. We've seen the 2v2 for North. And there it is. Also get there and straight onto the Sedge with the level advantage. Shadow Vision also roaming over. Is level 6 on the Ari. Excellent jungle assistance. Although Clyde has found a Riftock here in the bot lane and a flash forward. Ignite on. Sasuke already flash forward with the last auto. Is going to lantern out to safety. Very nearly got the first blood in the 2v2. That was so close, but a really great flash and dash from Rift Dog, making sure that Tristana's rocket jump was not going to connect on him, is what saved his life. One more auto, one more tick of anything would have done him in. 
Nice angles. There's the ulti. Pulls him back there as well. Now the popping up to charge up, and that's going to kick Hecarim out of there. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we're never going to see Hecarim solo kill Poppy again. Or at all this game. With the ultimate, you can always get him out, and he has no way of dodging that. No dashes, no flashes. You're just going to get booted out every single fight. Curious to see if it holds up in 10 minutes' time, but I think I agree with you. Oh, what a hook there from Clyde. Predicts the pike dash. Handy now low. Sasko going to try and get the last autos in and thresh. Very deservedly collects first blood. His hooks have been on point, predicting the location of Pike. Such a hard one, too. Oh, no. Shadow Vision is supposed to be the ulti. Wolf stole it now. Can look to try and dive in. Gonna get the wave through. Precarious spot for Shadow Vision, who has no flash. But Wolfie does not want to dive. Let's take another look at this one. So the play, and wow. How did you even know he was going there? Nice prediction there from Clyde, and Sasuke just swoops in to clean it up. No ulti there for Penguin, so cannot save the support. That's a power of Thresh. He persists nerves, he persists anything. The fact that he's a skill shot guy that can disrupt so much with Lantern has made him a staple ever since he's been out of the game. I feel like Clyde also took the losing pike as kind of a personal affront. As again, another hook lands up to the play. Penguin now forced to burn the Lantern's fight, but that's a death there for Kindred. Sasuke now collecting some gold. Wow, that, that's a big, big spell to burn on top of the fact that you're now going to lose that Mountain Dragon. And again, you talk about it being a different game. It feels like we've flipped the side of the map that Maryville decided to play around. I mean, top lane is just kind of, you know, a bit of pressure here, but mostly just farming back and forth. Niles is going to try and make the solo kill that Crumb said couldn't happen. Happen! But no ulti, so Crumb can't it off. Wait a minute. Hook lands again. They're going to lose the Drake. How did they get burnt off this Wolfie Kid? Already able to grab it. NC State steal the Drake away and get a kill. That's huge. That's huge. That Mountain Dragon was going to dictate so much. And now that Tristana is not in the lane, Lucian can get some plates down there. That is exactly what North Carolina is needing. They're back in the gold lead. I don't know what happened to push them off because that top lane was getting close. But well, maybe we'll get a look in in just a few moments. Oh, nice. Stun landing in. So we'll check out what happened. Oh, so Tristana gets out right away, and they just don't have enough damage to finish it. A really great hook. But the fact that Ari was able to collapse sooner than Silas made a world of difference, because now they're kind of out of position. Silas even burned Flash to try to steal that. He knew that dragon mattered a lot. Yeah, couldn't get it. It does go over. Ari's back into the queue, fixes it, I think, and now Niles. We're getting a 1v2, no ult here for Kindred. Wolfie gonna roam up, there's the Onslaught of Shadows back in. Moves soon with the E, Penguin dead to Wolfie. And now Wolf gonna get chased down, flayed by Clyde. This is gonna be kills picked up everywhere. Finds the hook on the predict on the other side, and Shadow Visions goes over. Clyde though, out of cooldowns, looking a little too low on health. Flays him out of the dash! Shadow Vision though, able to grab the kill. Clyde did everything to try and get it, and it cost him his life instead. Shadow Visions, what an MVP. Being able to trade that back after getting hooked by a crazy Thresh, and Kindred would have loved to have that ultimate, but the fact that they trade one for one is just great, because that looked like it could have been so much worse. Feels like, you know, you outplay someone and they just outstat you. Shadow Visions <laughs> oh. too far ahead of the Thresh, like despite all these plays. But I mean, again, Maryville getting so aggressive here in the top half. So immediately they know that Hecarim is in the area and they're thinking, can we catch on to him? There's just no crowd control. Yes, he's gonna get out, but immediately decides to turn the second that Silas hits a really good ultimate into the charge to bring back the Kindred. And now look at this hook. Boom, catches the Ari in the middle, but he's all by himself. So Ari decides, you know what? Why don't we just kill him too? Yeah, Ignite down, Sun Division just grabs the kill and dashes out to safety. Poppy, I believe, also got out as well. So I feel like maybe Maryville could have focused a little bit more on one target instead of just trying to outplay the mid laner. Instead, it is just a trade. But again, gold going in the right place for MU. Ooh. Cody Shadow. There's Rift Dog pushing in. A couple plates being collected here in the bottom lane. Once again, Rift Dog off to a good start here on the Lucian. Yeah, I was just thinking that. Once again, the bottom lane from North Carolina is doing a lot of work, but remember that Clyde has opted to roam a little bit more than Hasani, so. I think if Clyde could play Thresh Jungle, he would, because he does not want to be there in the bot lane. He's one of those bottom laners that just hate laning. Are we sure he's not the bot player? I had Honey was the <laughs> bot player, but certainly a lot of roaming happening there. Who's that's gonna go over? We all know those games. You get in and someone says, I'll be, I'm a roaming support in Locks in Velkaz. <laughs> I'm River Shen, <laughs> trust me. Locks in Velkaz. 2v2 breaking out. Flash forward, Fox. 
Honey gonna get clipped, TP in from NCS. Gets out of there, Honey jukes out of the way after Pike ulting over. But now again, the fight happens, Edwani on not gonna connect, but there's the onslaught of shadows. Landros Pike gonna try and knock him out with the E, but doesn't quite get it, but still, so much CC. Health bug way too low. A double play landed, a double kill for Sedge. And Maryville just cleaning house in the bot lane. And they're so fast to collapse. Ari's here, but what can she really do? It's a 3v5. Power also gonna get the demolished proc off. Plates continuing to be traded back and forth. First turret gold still up for grabs. Rift Herald also available, but both teams commit all 10 players. Maryville come out on top there. Ooh, Shadow Visions against Wolfie. Never mind. We're going to look at this fight once again. So the Hook and Flame misses, but they're already kind of overextended. A really good flash from the Thresh puts him in a tough position. This is honestly a sick interaction. The fact that he blinks out, but the teleport is the complete Poppy is here in the mix. Everybody's here, and Hecarim just has so much more value at this stage in the game. That mid-game spike out of a ignite Hecarim is way too much with an onslaught of shadows that is so well-timed. All that Kindred's ultimate does is just stall out their death. Well, of course, the fighting is not stopping as the Crab goes over to CKG. Looking like, actually, NCS bringing more up here. Is Hani going to roam up on the pike? Rift Herald, maybe just the objective teams want to fight around. We'll see how it develops. Again, it feels like both these games have had pretty high speed early games. This one a little bit slower than our last, but starting to pick up as the teams are looking to contest for these objectives. But look at what Maryville just did. Tristana was in the mid lane. So knowing that there's five people there, North Carolina State, they just can't move up and try to contest. They already know they're outnumbered, so they've conceded the Rift Herald, and they're going to try to get some plates, but Tristana can already make it back into the bottom lane, and surprise, Pike is not there to punish. So this is a really good move by Maryville to get the objective and then save the CS, save the plates into the bottom lane, and keep your already carry farming. Penguin, though, just going to try and grab the Ocean Drake. Here, NC State, their second Drake after the steal away from Shadow Visions earlier. Drake will go over, has the, oh, actually doesn't have Smite, but does have some teammates, so able to collect it without too much drama. It's a good trade, and unfortunately for Maryville, the Herald was a little bit too late, and they're not going to be able to get that plate gold out of it, and that makes Herald really not that strong. Certainly love to get the bonus gold, but see what they do want to drop it here. CKG with the eye in his inventory. Gonna channel it, but actually, this is the tower they decide they want to take. Take a look at Hecarim. He's in the river in bottom lane. Five people from Maryville ready to fight whenever the fight breaks out. Whereas Poppy, she's now in the Rift Herald, clearing out paint boards. She's not able to help if a fight breaks out. So North Carolina has to be very careful. Now gonna collapse mid. Charm is really nice there from Shadow Visions. And Honey here as well in support. So whatever dive may have been brewing there for Maryville does peter out. Rift Dog gets a bit of gold there off the Rift Herald. Continuing to build strength as Wolf now under the turret. And Miles already back up here to the top lane. Doesn't have the Triforce. I imagine is getting close on the gold. Actually not that close. Has about a 1200 bank right now and doesn't even have the team converted off that Mana Crystal. So now the next dragon, Mountain. Huge deal for both teams. Obviously, two mountain stacks is amazing, but getting your own from Maryville would be really great. There's no other objective to fight our, around besides this, so we can expect a big team fight to break out at that stage. Ristog uh, finishing off the work he'd done earlier. Able to get that bot out of turret and even up the structures. As you can see, gold is only 300 ahead for Maryville, so effectively even game. I mean, what happened? We heard that interview with Ovali. He said they were going to smash them. Not yet. It's not. If this was G2 versus TL, the game would be two minutes from the <laughs> Nexus already. <laughs> Don't remind me. That's <laughs> not <laughs> Just trying to farm it out. Poppy pretty tanky. Almost has that Sunfire cape complete. And again, Hecarim still working on item number one. So things are going to slow down a little bit more, I have to think. Certainly had some pretty dilated mid games actually NC State maybe with the first proactive play Wolfie does spot them on the control wall but how does he get out of this situation give Kindred an assist that would be nice but Wolfie gonna keep trying to run doesn't really have any teammates to run to feels Lucian on now just gonna maybe go for it 
Looks for the culling. Not gonna even need it. Oh, there he goes. Bit of style to try and exit it out, but Tiny wants to kill. He does give the goal over. And the poor guy didn't even get to mark the Silas to try to get a stack out of that. So at least he gets an assist on the board. And let's see what that Poppy Ultimate can do. So she Ooh. oops up the heck of nice. He's on the show. Oh, oh no! No! He hit the minion. That would have been the outplay. Oh, that would have been so sick. He uh, had it. Yeah, Niles gets away with one, I have to say. But you give him credit for at least having the vision to see that there was a play there. So you give him that. You no, know, get it, get it right next time. But sick, <laughs> sick. Well, they got the mid out of turret, so they can't be complaining too much. NC State actually making a bit more of this mid game as Maryville kind of stalled things out. Again, still waiting on the Hecarim who did not get a massive gold lead early on, like in game one. Still leaning on their bot lane advantage, and that's really who or whom Maryville played through last game. When they were in that lull, they just decided to go back to diving top lane. So now that the Hecram is not capable of doing that, are they gonna be trying to help the Hecram lane more or are gonna have Hecram start roaming elsewhere into the map? And I just wanna see the development of their playstyle with Niles because if he's talking up how good he is, and how much the team plays around them. I want to see a lot of variety and a lot of different styles that they can do here because there's a lot of teams here that are very aware that Maryville likes to play through Niles. Yeah, certainly more of a team fighting champion, so I expect Niles to get a lot more involved in the 5v5 than maybe he would have on the Aatrox. Clyde fishing for Pike, but now Pike gonna go fishing himself, finds unfortunately a caster creep. As Niles also roamed down for a potential roam, Wolf almost finds a snipe there. Niles though just gonna turn on the W and walk away. It does feel like the, you know, teams are being very cautious. And this is something we have seen in past college championships as well. Teams can delay it a little bit more. These teams aren't as refined, of course, as the uh, as the uh, academy or the LCS level. But this always works. A classic crumbs. Oh. Hiding in a brush and looking for a pick. Wait, whoa! Kind of outplayed himself. Oh, the Buster Shot as well might save Shadow Visions, but Wolfie gonna grab the kill. Saskio actually, with the burn down, does grab it. And now Hani too far forward. Tristana just got two kills out of nowhere, and Nile finds the onslaught of Shadow's gonna lock up Wolf, and that will be kill number three over to Maryville. Not ideal. But that's one way to put it. <laughs> The dragon is about to come up as well, so they're gonna be losing a mid lane turret and the dragon all in preparation for that fight, and that's because they just did not have the proper vision set up to get that play done. And now the gold lead ticking up. They'll potentially take the structure lead if they can get mid out of here, although turning attention onto the dragon maybe seems like the more prudent thing. So Pike is going around trying to find a setup, and Ari's just whimsically flying there. Does not see the Silas, by the way, on a control ward and a ward in the island pixel brush. So that could have been only two deaths. Instead, it turns out it's three. So pretty powerful move out of Maryville. The fact that they knew pink the brush, wait in here, and they'll they'll come face check. They'll come to us, and then we'll engage them. And Wolf has to feel like, you know, I absorbed all this pressure. This guy's playing Ignite Hecarim into me. Jungle is not coming. I'm keeping uh, even on CS. Keep it cool. Keep it cool. Don't put blame on anyone. The game is still fine. It's a thousand gold only, right? A thousand gold. It might have looked horrible. Yes, some plays have been mechanically. That Ooh. one's good. Charm on a CKG. Does get out of the central pike pull, though, as the Lantern also there for additional safety. Hecarim down the bottom, so this is a 4v4 if MU want to start it. Nile, so again, looking for another solo kill in about as many games. And this is where Hecarim starts to get real frustrating. Oh, what a stun finds Hani. Calling out there from Rift Dog. Wolfie steals it in kind. Clyde caught. He's going to be forced to flash and drop the box. Hook not going to land from the Thrash either. And I think, oh, actually, the 1v1 ended. Poppy it, died. It did happen, but it didn't happen in the lane, and I think that's not, that, that was a caveat that I added. That's if, true. That, you're right. I said 10 minutes at about 7 minutes. <laughs> it's now 21, so you, got, you're right. She Trump. got ran down, and that's the Ignite. You just are not going to be able to beat the power of Conquer in 1v1. So remember that it heals you for the damage that you're dealing. Oh! That's what happened. Now we know. And again, all of a sudden, a champion that I was like, you know what? I think he's going to 5v5 more with. I take it back. I don't think there's going to be as much 5v5 as that's what's going to happen in the 1v1. Looks like Sharam's fist on the way as well, probably for a Starrux gauge. 
So not expecting too many tank items here from the Hecarim either. Marivor once again have their top laner in a side lane ready to execute the plan. And it's the fact that he can take Ignite and you're out there as a poppy thinking, why can't I take Ignite? That seems a big disadvantage on my end. And Bellbook Poppy. Maybe we'll see more top laners try to do that. The ones that have escapes. You know, sometimes even Akali's do that. But that's in normals. Uh, I have seen that in an LCS game, Crumbs. I will not remind the audience who that was, but I have seen it. I saw it this year. We'll move on. <laughs> Saskio collecting uh, some creeps again in a side lane. Yeah, only 20 CS down, not too bad. And with two items on the Trist, feeling pretty good with the IE and the RFC all done. Riftog does have the Black Cleaver finish also, but Tristana looking to scale quite a bit better as that long range crit ADC. Oh, yeah. I mean, the Lucian is not going to be scaling that great when you go with Black Cleaver and the Blade of the Ruined King. That doesn't mean you're not, you're not strong, though, because right now he is at his Prime. That is the best power spike you have, especially against a champion like Hecarim or Sejuani that only has Ninja Tabi's four armor. Here's a four-man siege mid lane from North Carolina and Hecarim basing. Are they looking for a teleport? Because Tristana and Thresh are collapsing. And you can see just as soon as they lose sight of the Hecarim, they're like, okay, we can't push anymore. Like between the Pike and the Ari, I actually like the pick potential. I think North Carolina should be playing up like this in this situation, in fact, maybe caught a jungler, but not the best target to try and assassinate. But again, as soon as they lose sight of the pony, everyone leaves. And here he Ooh, is, that's though. TP. Penguin sticking around on the Krog camp. Actually, Hani also may be caught as well. Shadow Division is going to try and save the day, but first time going to land in onto the pike. Gets the ulti, finds the execute! Wolfie might be able to find more. It could be Chain Gangs here with the pike ulti. And that's a great sedge ult as well. Wolfie gonna hang out and Niall's gonna grab a kill. Diving in, looking for that next stun, but not gonna find it. It's 23 minutes with two tanks and a mountain dragon up. That is definitely the Baron play. And there's nothing that North Carolina State can do about it. There is not even in position to take anything in response. Poppy's gonna try though, but what can she really do? Glad missing the play. Oh, good kick out. They got Saskia though, that's not the jungler. That will be Smite <laughs> securing the Baron. Maryville looking to sweep this set and move themselves into the semifinals. So this all started by Kindred being super, super greedy because that Krog had a mark. She's out there thinking, ooh, I didn't get a lot of kills, but I can get a mark right now. Hey team, can you help me collapse? And everybody dies for the mark. Good flash there from Penguin, but doesn't save him, unfortunately. And of course, as soon as the jungler dies, that's the green light to do, Baron. Yeah, absolutely. And it just happens that if Kindred does not get her marks early in the game, you're just going to have to accept that you're going to be very weak. And it's super hard to do that because you want that extra range against champions like Hecarim and Sejuan. It makes a world of difference. So I understand her position. She did not snowball the way she wanted to. And any mark can help. At least she got that, and she's a little bit closer to hitting that four, but it's still not worth a Baron. Yeah, blue buff not up either. That's where the next mark currently is for Penguin. Ocean Victor is available. Niles, though, with no TP, has abandoned his team on the top half of the map. Ocean Drake will go over, but with the Baron, Maryville just trying to knock down as many turrets as possible. Gotta get all that gold. A nice little charm onto Sejuani. She does have a War Mog and is level 12, so that's 3,000 HP on her. Gonna be able to regen back to full health after four seconds. <laughs> uh, I love Silas. Wolfie steals the calling. Oh, good hook! That's gonna be a kill. Sasuke goes down to land just fight, not in range! And now big cooldown burn. Shadow Vision's gonna be the target, but Niles out on the lantern. Maryville looking to crack this base. Shadowvich is trying to make the play happen, but Clyde simultaneously looks to make the flash hold go instead. They cancel each other out, but inhibitor turret in mid does fall down. Without the lamb's respite, I don't think they have any uh, any incentive to try to get any picks, to try to do anything here. They're just going to cut their losses and say, great, we lost the inhibitor. What else can we take before Maryville just strips our jungle? Well, a minute 20 left on the Baron as Maryville will take a reset. So this all starts with Pike being a little bit greedy, and yet you get the hook, but when you go for the hook, you are essentially stuck in one place. You channel that ability, which gives Thresh, gives Clyde that great opportunity to counter it, pick him right off, and this is just comical. The fact that they're both right in front of each other and miss is great. 
Yeah, Shadow Vision, uh, Divius' ulti was looking for a charm there, so not the flash, but Clyde at the same time has flashed straight into the charm. <laughs> but buffered the hook, which unfortunately didn't hit, <laughs> which would have been at least a success, but they both saw the play. I admire both teams looking for those picks. Clyde has been on top of these hooks pretty much all series long. North Carolina continuing to lose ground here. And they're split pushing. You've got Hecarim in the mid lane. Sejuani in the jungle trying to cut off any potential flanking routes out of North Carolina. They're yeah, not really afraid of Pike right now. Maybe Kindred joining in adds a little bit more to the equation. Niles ready with the ulti. Not quite level 16, but charging up. Again, threatening Saskia with the long range. And the Baron buff still up for just this cannon. A few more pot shots under the turret as they wait for the supers. Good charge! Good execute! They find Niles! That's exactly what they need. Get those picks, the Pike and the Ari together. You understand how these champions can work in unison. Another nice, nice little pick, but the hook. And that's another traded away as Wolf just evaporates. Hook on to Clyde, finds the hook himself. He finds Rift Dog. Everyone in the States is popping the lamp despite Maryville on the retreat, but another hook lands straight into it there. A shot of it and tried to dive in for another kill, but lands just by by Wolfie stolen, almost saves his teammate. But I think the charm made him walk out of it. What a mess in the bot lane. That's just so powerful out of Wolfie, making sure that he always has a new ultimate that just disrupts everything Tristana is going to be able to push. And they back off. They're not going to risk the fact that there is more members that can respawn. They cracked the base, but they lost quite a few valuable members in the meantime. Yep, they wanted to take one more inhibitor turret before they had to leave. And they did it, but it took a lot of resources to get there. This is what we wanted to see. Get the hook, get the stuns, the pikes, the execute. It's great. But Pike is not able to do more after this because Clyde, it's a Clyde show at this point. Yeah, you hooked the Tristana in, but then the Poppy gets hooked, deleted right away. That matters more to me than the Pike hook. And yeah, you hooked the Threshing, but look at this one. Hooks the AD carry into a beautiful Zhonya's. It's just mechanically beautiful. Another hook on Ari, midair. Back to back to back. Yeah, unlucky to not get some of these kills as yet. That charm walked the Sedrani out of the ult that Wolfie stole. But again, Mary will say, you know what? We got enough done. We can try and take this turret. Saskia stands his ground, dodges that hook. And they do get effectively what they came for. Just, you know, maybe lost a few more champions than they would have liked. A oh, uh, uh, heavy toll. Yes. Good enough, we'll call it. Is Maryville still up a decent chunk of gold, although this could be bad. Pick on a Sedwani, lands it out. Charmy to land as well. CC Chain is not good enough, but there's the seal there for Wolf. A double knock up there from the Keeper's Verdict and a shutdown. Gonna find three. North Carolina State coming alive. There's a TP that can get even more if they can find a way to get the Hecarim. Here comes Hani. Can he get the hook? Nope, he's way too fast, but that is huge. The pick potential. I think they finally understand how this composition works. And check it out. Baron is about to spawn. They're making a beeline for it. Niles though, no TP, actually already used it, basically proxying the mid wave. So this Baron will be given over. Jungler is going to be dead. EKG cannot make it here in time. They've sent Shadow Visions back the to make sure the Nexus doesn't die. The inhibitor does not matter here for North Carolina State. The fact that they get Baron means that they're going to be able to defend their base until the inhibitors come back up. And because the next Dragon is a Cloud, you don't even have to leave your base to contest. This is fantastic out of them. And it all starts by Pike, by Hani, making sure that he stealthed out. Hmm, who can we get? It doesn't matter who you get. You're strong enough to get anybody. The hook into the charm, as we were saying, as I said at the start of the game, if you don't have Merc Dread, it's gonna bite you. And then the Tristana gets flanked by Poppy, who has that Keeper's Verdict, prevents the jump, and then the ultimate to keep them in place. That was just beautiful. That's the best execution for this composition we've seen out of North Carolina all game long. Great flank there from Wolf to seal the last few kills. Baron over to NC State as a result. And you can see that gold difference has been chopped almost back down to where we started here. At one point, look almost even. Look at that. Okay. Nice, oh. nice little fold of blue. You can see a nice little hue coming up. Oh, look at that. That's the power of the update Building live. Up. And again, with the Baron power play, could get even better here. This turret will go down now. Gold lead starting to feel a little bit more substantial, almost up to a thousand. And Maryville, I think, just saying, you know what? We've got to keep the Hecarim pressure on. We think we can defend with what we have now, but two minutes of defense without your Hecarim. 
Yeah, they're not the greatest at sieging, which is part of the problem with the Lucian. But hey, you're back in the game. The gold is even, and now it's all going to be about teamfight execution. So that's exactly what North Carolina wanted. They weren't really in it. It looked like it was about to be over, but they found the play. Now they need to do it one more time. And if they find it here, they can end the game because of the Baron. Oh, hook again. Lions onto the shadows in. Lions just fight down, but they still get the kill. Saskio able to collect it, but the trade kill will go over as Clyde falls down as well. Here comes Wolf gonna TP in. It's 4v4 at this point. Silas is in the back lane. He just got out of that. Baron is still up. And without the supports being involved, I wonder who's gonna be more affected by it. The oh. Lantern and Hooks or just the Thresh and the Execute? Well, they're kind of out of ulties on the Maryville side. So North Carolina push in. They'll take the inhib. They'll look to get the inhibitor itself. I'll play take the tower. Excuse me. Just needs a few more shots. Baron up cannon. We'll finish it off. That's huge for them. They got an inhibitor now. They have that advantage, and they're going to be able to base and defend that wave bottom lane. Yep, you have to rush down because the super's still streaming in, but Hani already there. Miles trying to find a pick, but it just doesn't have an ulti, so it can't really make much happen there. All right, let's see. What does North Carolina do from this point on? Because I know they're waiting for that inhibitor to come back up, but they now have pressure on the map. Right? They should be able to be in a position to fight for this next Elder. They have three dragons. It's going to make a world of difference when it comes to taking down these tanky members with that burn. So the Elder Dragon is going to be a really important fight. But because of how all these games have gone so far, the vision that leads up to those fights matters even more. So can they afford to get out of their lanes set up the vision and make the play once again. Both teams have done it this time around, but it's the first to jump, the first to the play that will win. That's what it's felt like, you know, pretty much all the engagements we've seen in this series have just felt like the team that went first usually won. And as you're mentioning, you win first by having the knowledge first of where your opponents are and what plays you can go for. So game already longer than Maryville would have liked given the lead they had. Hani continuing to dance around hooks and fish for his own. Both eat an unhealthy amount of pokes there, but Passive will heal most of that back up. And Niles just continuing his campaign here in the sideline. Now with a Guardian Angel. Unfortunately, Hecarim is no longer at a point where he's just god mode, though. Hecarim does fall off. And yes, he's very strong. And they might be trying to pick him off, but he's not the guy that's going to be able to get in there and one-shot an entire team carry. People can defend against him now. Also going to have to zoom away. I spot Rift Dog, so make sure he doesn't go that way and actually rejoins his team pretty cleanly. Again, Maryville, though, still trying to push the supers away. Still a few more for Wolf to deal with. But only 20 seconds to the blue inhibitors back up. That hook's not going to land. But they will protect the control ward here for North Carolina. Game getting really tense. Whoever wins the next fight wins the game. Two mountains, lots of sieging power. It's just almost impossible to not crack the base with a Tristana Hecarim or a Lucian Kindred. And again, have to keep eyes on Saskio here, who did fall behind, still behind in CS as far as the scoreboard shows, but despite Rifto getting another good start in the lane, it's Tristana who's now scaled up to four items. This has to sell the Dorans and buy something else to finish off that build. She's dealing more damage than the Lucian at this point. For sure, and Rift Dog went Infinity Edge, which I think you kind of have to do, because you're like, well, I don't really build for crit, but I'm not going to win late game team fights without it, so has to start moving that build over a little. Alt stolen there, it's the culling once again. Pike in the mix, maybe too far forward. Shadow Vision though, looking for the flank, here comes Penguin. Ulti finds the Arya and pulls out with the Lantern. I think they're just trying to disengage, popping and help them out. But the Elder Dragon up, you don't want to have low health here when you're trying to contest for this very important objective. But now, Maryville University is all over the place. They're going to be able to engage from multiple angles. They take the Poppy Ultimate and it misses. Wolfie just trying to do what he can. He's level 16, the hijack cooldown cycles through so quickly, but I think they're going to have to force a 50-50. Wolf oh. going in, looking for the fight. There's the Pike ulti, trying to find the execution. Wolfie stole the Lantern's fight, though, and Niles back over the side with no ulti. Going to try and take the Penguin. Dragon's ready! That's a steal for Maryville! And now all hell breaks loose. Wolf dead. Penguin dead. 
and Maribel find their way back in again. They're gonna go for the siege. It's 45 seconds on Kindred and 50 onto the Poppy with the burn. How in earth is North Carolina gonna defend against it? You even have, wait a minute, they're not going for it. They're going for the base oh, race. There's a race, okay, I guess they have to pull away. They're gonna leave Tristana down there. She can finish the game. With the support, she has it. CKG down there as well. Styles again, running interference. On sort of shadows, almost back up. Clyde's here as well, still racing around, but Whoopi still with the stolen lair to this fight. Buys the time. They CC ripped off. They get the shutdown. And that'll be Nexus and Ceres over to Maryville. As Sasuke and CKG walk the minion waves in to push them to another semi final. Oh, what an amazing ending to the series. The fact that we somehow ended up in a base race was just beautiful. But but in the end, it all came down to that last dragon fight at Elder. Split second decision, either use Zanyas or use Lamb's Respite. Penguin chooses to use the Zanyas, but it gives the opportunity for the bear, for the dragon to be stolen. Tough spot, because Kindred Ulti is going to keep that Elder Dragon alive as well, and you're back in the same exactly. situation. So, teams will shake hands, a 2-0, but... I think the scoreline doesn't quite reflect what happened <laughs> across these two games, especially that last one. But boy, oh boy, if this is the team that wants to make a statement winning the college championship two years ago, I believe, they are back on the stage with some fresh faces and looking good. Yeah, I mean, game one definitely looked a lot stronger from them than this one, but even here, they were composed and they understood their win conditions. I think more impressive than anything, the fact that Tristana was always in the game, falling behind early, always making the comeback, split pushing very well, and it only came down to just really bizarre hooks and charms being thrown left, right, and center that got the picks that even got North Carolina back into the driver's seat. I, I can definitely see why Shadow Visions got his Ari banned in game one, because certainly those charms, those angles were almost enough to find enough crucial picks to push them over the line. But I'm kind of with you there in the bottom half of the map. I think both supports deserve a pretty uh, rousing round of applause, because there was so much playmaking happening. I mean, you don't see Thresh Pike that often, and or both Brand of them Pike. were just going off. Or Brand Pike. Yeah. Those were the matches that we had. We typically see Tom Kench versus Brom. Boo. Boo, yeah. <laughs> Not a fan at all. Well, that was a fun one. I think today, though, from all our series, what I've learned from the college championship is that the bold are rewarded. And today, Yes. Maryville with the boldest team this series. I think you can use that as a motto for season nine in League of Legends. <laughs> now, the bold are rewarded. I like it. Well, we'll get an interview in just a few short moments, but not there just yet, Crumbs. That was fun. I'm looking forward to more college championships. Yeah, because now all the teams can look at what worked today and then play their best of series tomorrow. But then we're going to move on to best, best of, of fives. Five. That is such a different beast than best of threes. Because best of threes are just one step above a best of one, which is a lot more versatile when it comes to your champion select and when it comes to deciding who the better player is or the better team because, yeah, you can have one mismatch here and you're already at match point, so there's not a lot of room to experiment, whereas in a best of five, you can just throw everything out at the other team and understand what works, what didn't, and adapt mid-game. Well, we've already seen some spicy ones, but for a first-hand account on that series win, let's hear from Ovali and the victorious top laner. Thanks, guys. Niles, congratulations on that win. And I want to ask you about the ending because base race to end the series. What was that like for you? Uh, we wanted to make the series exciting. You know, usually one seed versus eight seed isn't that exciting. But we were like, guys, let's base race at the end. You know, give them a show. And uh, yeah, so I, I hope it was exciting for everyone to watch. And I want to ask about you specifically because you chose Maryville specifically for their esports program. So what made you want to make that decision? So uh, Dan Clerkey reached out to me last year. Uh, to try out and he said that he thought that I would have a uh, it, it really met like my goals in life where I, I didn't necessarily maybe want to be a pro I wasn't sure at the time but I wanted to go to school for sure and it gave me like stability so like um, the Maryville esports program like gave me everything that I really wanted at the time so yeah it just worked out that way so do you have your goals for life settled right now? Because talking to a couple of the players, they see you as this new, uh, potentially new NA homegrown talent, and hopefully they'll see you in the competitive scene. Yeah, no, when I initially went into Maryville, I was I didn't have as many pro aspirations as I do now. Uh, I've improved so much while I've been at Maryville that I see myself like improving even more while I'm being here. So um, definitely I would be open to anything like that. And when it comes to being um, the next like NA homegrown talent, I think that I definitely have the potential to be that just because of the improvement that I've shown over the past year at Maryville. 
Uh, I've diversified my play style, and I've just become like a better teammate and leader. So. Well, before you get there, you have to go through semifinals against Illinois, who won earlier today. So what do you think about going against them as your next opponents? Um, Illinois' top laner is trash, so I'll probably trash him like I trashed uh, NC State's top laner. So that's, that's probably how we'll win the series. You sound incredibly confident, but tomorrow we're going to see four more teams play. We're going to see UCI take on Columbia. What are your thoughts going into that match? I think Misty Stumpy is much better than Captain Nuke in the top lane. And if CC can play around Misty and let him carry, CC will take the series. But uh, Youngbin is obviously the rock for UCI in the bot lane. Uh, so it'll just be a Misty versus uh, Youngbin battle. And whoever plays better on the day will take the series for sure. Nels, I really like you. You're giving me the spicy takes. But again, congratulations on the win. And that is it for us here. Back to you guys at the State Farm Analyst Desk. All right, let's, let's pack it up. It's done. Niles did Double. our job here for the uh, setup of the matches. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you so much, Aveline. Congratulations to Maryville uh, exercising those demons from last year, dropping out in the quarterfinal phase to Maryland, this time taking care of business against NC State. Guys, uh, that was a, a back and forth series, but a 2-0. Yeah, it was closer than I expected it to be, actually. I think that uh, despite all the hype coming in from Maryville, like the first game was super close, and then game two, they came out in a more slow and controlled pace, as we expected, and I think that favored them. And despite that, it still felt like they were giving up chances in the mid-game and overall could probably clean up their play going into the semifinals. Uh, but still, a lot to be proud of and a nice win. Yeah, I think it was the kind of thing where you could tell both teams were pretty good. And I thought I was very yeah. impressed by NC State finding a couple of really nice flanks over the course of this game, even from positions where they're pretty far behind. Yeah, you know, shout out to the Wolfpack here just because this was the number two seed from the South region, fought their way through plans, their first time making it to the championship. And yeah. like, huge for them because this is a roster that's been around for a while. They've toiled for a while. They don't have as much support, as, especially as a school as Maryville. Stark difference there. Very happy for them to at least have acquitted themselves well, well enough to get a compliment from D. Mark Z. Yeah, <laughs> I guess that's what everyone's here for, right? Just a compliment from me. And I think they represented the South well, to be fair. You know, this is a, a region that's not always known to be the strongest, but I think that they can be proud with their performance. Like Mark said, they had chances in the second game, some really nice poppy flanks. They actually were pressing at times. And I think if you ask Maryville and they were speaking honest about this game, I bet they felt pressured. Well, let's take a look back at this game. 18 minutes, a big 3-0 here for uh, Maryville. Starting off with an interesting set of engages here. <laughs> I mean, that's the nice thing about when you're in the right position. You don't need to play it perfectly execution-wise. So yeah, they missed a couple different <laughs> abilities, but they did find a really nice flank. Uh, and this was when it started to feel like Maryville was going to run away with the game. Mm. They, they have been relatively close to this point. They did have a lead, but this is what really ballooned it for them. Yeah, just on a multiple kills there. Obviously, Clyde, multiple hooks here on the death sentences, and it just seemed like to be a matter of time where the Tristana would outscale, the game would be un touchable here for North Carolina State. However, the Wolfpack found a way back in uh, at 29 minutes, had themselves one heck of engage here off of the back of their very unconventional support, Hani. Yeah, and also look at the positioning of Poppy as this fight begins. It's a beautiful hook by Hani, and they blow up the Sejuani. If Sejuani can proc Aftershock here, maybe this fight is different, but Poppy comes in on the flank, hits a beautiful ultimate, and the fight is just over before it even begins. And after this, they secure the Baron, and, and this is where they start pressing in this game, and I still felt like they had chances, but ultimately, Maryville is just too good. Yeah, I think, I think that flank, like you're saying, the Poppy is really what made it so good because mm. you're attacking from one side, and even though they think they're going to get out, the Poppy has the other flank covered. It's like that's some really good decision-making yeah. set up. The other team's in a 1-3-1, so you attack the, the weakness in the mid lane. All that was, was just super well done. It, it looked, it, the series was so interesting to me for North Carolina State because you have the complete opposite. Experience, guys that have been there multiple times, three times for CKG, Saskio, and Walrus, the substitute. Uh, and the Maryville team knew how to win, and it looked like we were seeing the making of a team learning how to win with NC State. Great Baron play usage in the mid lane, able to get the inhib, traded the bot inhib for Baron in the first place, but then they start walking down to uh, the bot lane. Elder Drake comes on up, and that's where we have our final replay. Yeah, and this was a, a bit of a stalled out situation. They're kind of harassing the jungler on the top side, but eventually CKG wraps around, so this is a really good job on the side of Maryville of getting all their people on the right side and just not the cleanest engaged. They didn't actually get on top of anyone. So now that TP completes and the Hecarim's able to come around the backside, 
basically annihilate the enemy team, and they unfortunately lose the bear. Uh, excuse me, Elder Dragon as well. Exactly, and there was a, almost a nice engage on the Tristana. They interrupted the jump. The Poppy had a great W there. Unfortunately, they just didn't turn off the objective at the same time decisively together. And if they had, maybe that fight goes differently. But again, ultimately, Maryville is just a better team. I mean, even after losing that, you saw that they still were looking for avenues to win the game. So instead of going back to defend 3v5, mm -hmm. they send the three people mid and say, all right, well, let's try and get into a base race situation. Right. It's not going to work, but it's still like that creative, yeah. like never give up mindset that I think we were all really impressed by. Yeah. And we got ourselves a bonus replay here for you guys. Oh, at yeah. the very top, oh. at the beginning of the game, hey. Hecarim and Poppy had an interesting interaction. Our two analysts here recreated, able to give us a, a quick definition on what happened, why there was no interrupt here on the Poppy. Yeah, so as we see the Hecarim won't come in, we would expect the Hecarim E to be interrupted by Poppy's W. Uh, and me and Mark actually were confused by this. We went back into the lab and did some testing. Mm -hmm. and. What we think is this case is there's an internal cooldown with Poppy W that's champion specific, mm -hmm. and the unstoppable Hecker multi counts as a dash, disables the Poppy W, allowing for the Hecker me to land. And I think that there's a good chance that Niles understood this, knew this matchup, and picked Hecker into the Poppy on purpose. And from where we were standing, you know, we didn't understand the pick. We're thinking this can't be that good for Hecarim. Uh, but with this interaction, it was interesting. Yeah, it's pretty consistent. So if you ever see the Poppy W, you just alt first and then yeah. your E will land. Uh, interestingly, it should work with any unstoppable dashes. So if you're ever playing AP Malphite into Poppy and you <laughs> buy a Proto Belt, yep. make sure you alt and then Proto Belt because the Poppy W will be taken off of you from the alt. So. Really Rotate. useless <laughs> niche cases if anyone wants to learn anything, because hey, this is collegiate after all. There it exactly. is. You, here for the higher yourself, education. There it is. Education from our top analysts here. With our matches in the books, let's take a look at how the bracket has shifted. Illinois took game three over Waterloo to earn a spot opposite Maryville, who delivered a 2-0 over NC State. We'll be back again tomorrow with another full day of action. Our coverage kicks off with Michigan State University versus University of Western Ontario, followed shortly by a clash between favorites to take the title, Columbia College versus UC Irvine. Exciting matchup. Honestly, it should not be a quarterfinal, but it's CC's own fault for losing. So that's why we get this banger quarterfinal. Uh, Mark, what do you think? They say they're the seven seed, so of course Columbia's gonna lose. It's not even that close, it's two versus seven. Uh, it's not so cut and dry. Yeah, know, it's not so cut and dry. I think CC will have chances, and overall it's gonna be an exciting game. Gents, a lot of eyes on that matchup. I'm looking mm. at the other side, Western Ontario. They were the number one seed. They got themselves the bye in Michigan State. Doing well early on from early reports. Exciting team to keep your eyes on. Now, that's gonna do it here for us, for myself, the casters, and the entire live broadcast crew. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you guys tomorrow for more League of Legends College Championship. Good night and take care. Welcome to the 2019 College Championship, where 354 teams have been whittled down to eight over just the past five months. Now, what we have here are the best of the 10 conferences clashing for the title of College Champion. Now, low for sure, and he may go down another one for one as the teams trade. And the Dragon is just gonna be real angry during this one. The Illinois not looking good in the first initiation of this one, but it's very low health bars here for Waterloo as they get stuck between two turrets. And you just yeah, I think you should win this. Slushy? Oh, oh, my oh, my God. God. oh, my 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 very nicely done. Second kill as well. Looking for that triple. What a turnaround game. Night and day performance. Coming out of Waterloo. The heck of a party for Ward Folly. Without a dragon being there, Sharp goes down real quick. They are unaware of where Illinois is coming from. There's a double kill for the Bosch. Looking for a triple uh -oh. kill as his support sets him up. Looking for the quadra kill as he moves forward. Across the board, it's shocking off from University of Illinois in game three, and they take down Waterloo. He's here again. There's an Octane Ulti. This is going to be Carnage. Back with a double kill on the Execute Ulti. Make it three is ripped off with a flash. The only delay is the inevitable. Once again, a sleep lance. Crying low. Looking to get dunked down by Penguin. Still is out of the tower. But there's the Ulti out of Kraken. Going to make it two. Wolf will go down as well. Yeah, we got Nice. Yeah, we got Yeah. Kill, baby! Yeah, we're ending yeah, yeah, yeah. Kill the game, boys. We're picking a roam up there, so I'm sort of shadows back in. Boost in with the E. Penguin dead to Wolfie. Kendra, Kendra. Yeah, I'm on AD. I'm on AD. Got two man play? Yeah, nice. 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 Got him. CC Chain is not good enough, but there's the seal there for Wolf. A double knock up there from the Keeper's Verdict and a shutdown. Gonna find three. North Carolina State coming alive. 
Onto the Shadow is almost back up. Clyde's here as well. Still racing around, but Whoopi still with the Stolen Lairs this fight. Buys the time. They CC Rift off. They get the shutdown. And that'll be Nexus and Series over to Maryville.